Here's another volume video uh, extending our techniques of volumes. It's a case where it's still a an object of revolution, like a lot of examples, um, but we're going to end up using a little bit different technique. So here's the region. It's everything between the x above the x-axis and below this parabola, y equals 2x minus x squared. We revolve that around the y-axis. And so if we want to get, I'm going to save this 2D picture. The 3D picture would be more like, here's that hump, here's the copy. And then, of course, we're going to just indicate a bunch of, uh, it's like a bunt cake. It's going around. It's got a, a, a top here going around. And then the middle goes around here. So there's a bit of a hole in the middle. It comes down to a very thin little hole there. Here, it's uh, got a ring that's high. That's the revolution of this guy around. And then it goes down again. It's got a flat bottom. Okay. So nice little, nice kind of pastry or something like that. So would we, we could in principle do this with washers. We could, and remember the key is to really be good on your 2D picture. We could theoretically slice that up into little strips. Revolving each strip produces a washer around here with a little bit of hole in the middle. Problem is, it's not just that washers is one of the more complicated uh, ways to do volumes. It's that we're, we would need to know for a given y value, y would be our variable there, and the thickness would be dy. We would need to know the minimum x value and the maximum x value as a function of y, and that's a pain. That's ugly. That's pretty. You could do that, but you need a quadratic formula. It's pretty ugly to do that. And there's a better way to do it. So let's just go back to our basic idea. Um, any volume, our strategy is always divide and conquer. It's the sum of a bunch of little bits of volume. And is if any kind of systematic way we have of chopping this thing up, this 3D region, uh, this 3D object into um, into bits is legal. And this is the first place we're not going to do it by parallel slices perpendicular to some axis. Instead, though, we're going to take a cue from the fact that, you know, if I slice this 2D region up into a horizontal slice and revolve it around and get a washer, what would happen if I slice the 2D region up into vertical slices? If I take all the possible vertical slices at all the different x values, take each of those slices and revolve those guys around. Well, that's what that's, what's that going to do? Let's see, this might be a little too busy already, but let, let's see. That's going to take a sli that vertical slice. It's going to revolve it around to be a cylindrical shell. So just if you isolate that, what I'm trying to draw here, is just a thin cylindrical shell. We totally know the volume of that, that kind of thing. Uh, am I drawing too much? Eh, probably. Well, these should be dotted, I guess. Okay, and then this goes around the top. So it's just a thin cylindrical shell. Okay, so let's see. Can I get the volume of that? Okay, that's going to be the thickness of the shell. Well, why does that shell have some thickness? That comes from here. Oh, that's dx. Awesome. Okay. So dv is something times dx. So it's the thickness of the shell. So it's like taking a, a can or something, the sides of a cylinder, that is a certain area, and then just times the thickness is going to be how much stuff is in there. I'm going to try and refocus. I hope that's not too obnoxious. Sorry, it's going to defocus for a minute. Nah, it looks a little better. Okay. Um, so I just need to put the, the, the um, surface area, the side surface area, not top and bottom, of a cylinder. Okay. So as it, at least a temporary notation, I'll use R. Okay. It's the radius of something. Okay. And then H. Okay. And we're going to be going to make that less geometric and more algebraic in a minute. But it's just going to be pi r squared h. Uh, so I'm sorry, just kidding. 2 pi r h. 2 pi r h. It's the surface area. Um, and so this is a little different. 2 pi r h dx. So surface area times thickness is the volume of a cylindrical shell. OK, so now the problem is I, I need everything in terms of x. OK, and I need some limits. Okay, ooh, limits, ooh, you know, I never actually figured out what the limits were, partly because I didn't know whether the variable is x or y until now, but now I know the variable is x. I'm going to collate stuff made from a slice here, a slice here, a slice here, a slice here. 2x minus x squared, where is that going to come back down to 0? It's going to be where x equals 2. Pretty easy to say. Okay, so this is going to be x is 0 to 2. 
So this is interesting. Even though it's a revolving around y, usually that would be a dy integral with washers or, or disks. Now it's going to be dx, and that's one of the things that's, that's switching. Oh, and I'm getting a little bit too close to my bottom here. There. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Okay, um, so 2 pi. Okay, now what is r? Oh, well, r was just how far that shell was from the axis of revolution. Oh, that's how far this particular strip was from the y-axis. That is called x. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. In some cases with an offset axis, that'll be a little more complicated. Okay. And then you need the height of the cylinder. That just comes from the height of the strip. As usual, I want to point out, everything really comes from this picture. You can read off all the data from this picture. It's just that that's being what you're actually calculating is what happens when you revolve that around. But really, all the essential data lives on the 2D picture. Okay, the height is just exactly the y as a function of x. Okay, and there it is, 2x minus x squared. So that's just a function of dx. Cool. So the whole is the sum of its parts, as always for any integral ever. Those parts are a new kind of shape, but not incredibly unfamiliar. A cylindrical shell with a certain thickness. And then you just have to say, what are those parameters based on this particular example? And we'll get more practice with that. Okay, so just to finish it off, I hate to trash the picture, but I want some space. So that's going to be 2 pi integral 0 to 2, 2x squared minus x cubed dx, 2 pi 2 thirds x cubed minus x to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 2. Not always, but you know, sometimes that's a 0 and it's going to die. Okay, I just want to make it simple for a first example. 2 pi, sorry, um, 2, let's so say that's 16 thirds minus 16 fourths. So that's 32 pi, a third minus a fourth is a twelfth. And that cancels down to 8 pi over 3. And one thing you want to do is do a reality check. Compare it to something, some simple thing that you know what the volume is. This, if I took the entire box here and revolved it around, it would be a big old cylinder uh, with radius 2. The height of this guy is uh, 1. It's easy to calculate that right in the middle. 2 minus 1 is 1. So that would be radius 2 and height 1. So the whole thing would be um, pi r squared h would be 4 pi. And indeed, this is a little bit less than 3 pi. So it's that what happens if you take that whole box to create a solid cylinder, and then we're carving out that kind of funky hole in the middle, and we're carving out some of the outside because it's got that rounded side. So you really should always compare it to a solid cylinder or something like that um, to make sure it makes sense. Cool.